Woe is me, consumed by fire, I fall, dragging my shadow to where I don't now even recognize myself. Pedro Calderón de la Barca, El Gran Teatro del Mundo. Welcome back. It's great to see you. At this point, the other squire hints at the identity of his master, who is meddling in the life of another knight. Other people's business kills the ass, and so that another knight might recover his lost sanity, he pretends to be crazy. Careful readers now know that the other knight is Carrasco, and our negative impression of Carrasco grows when the squire calls him more of a rogue than a fool or brave. Sancho's feelings for his own master make for a tender contrast here. That's not what mine's like. I mean, he's nothing like a rogue, but rather he has the soul of an open jug. He doesn't know how to harm anyone. He only does good to everybody. I love him like the strings on my heart. The theme of personal morality is now front and center. Carrasco's squire is skeptical and his warning to Sancho echoes an evangelical parable as well as an important episode of Lazario de Tormes. When the blind man leads the blind man, both risk falling into the hole. Next, the squires contrast their wealth. Sancho is poor. I only carry a bit of cheese in my saddlebags. The other squire is wealthy, but notice how his words hint at the threat of war. I carry better provisions on my horse's hindquarters than does a general when he goes on his marches. Did you know? In medieval times, a squire was a servant who tended to the arms of a knight. By way of his service, he could aspire to be trained as a young knight. More importantly, however, the other squire is radically generous. He shares with Sancho a large wineskin and a meat pie half a span in length. When Sancho praises the wine, oh son of a whore, rascal, damn it, if that's not Catholic good, his language alludes to the theme of racial and sexual impurity and tops it off with the theme of religious identity. This also forces Sancho to make a moral confession to his neighbor. I confess that I know it's no dishonor to say son of a whore to anyone when your intention is to compliment him. What follows is an allegory of sorts which relates the purity of wine to the purity of Sancho's ancestry. Just by tasting it, Sancho recognizes the wine's place of origin. Is this wine from Ciudad Real? The other squire is impressed. Good wine taster, bravo mojón, he says. Although in Andalusia, the term mojón also means turd. Sancho then claims that he has inherited a talent for tasting wine. I had in my ancestry on my father's side two of the most excellent wine tasters that La Mancha had seen in many years. How could we describe the relation between Sancho Panza and Tomé Cecial? A. Friendly, though at times tense. B. Erotic, though at times platonic. C. Weak, though at times opportunistic. Correct answer A. Friendly, though at times tense. Chapter 13 ends with an expression of loyalty by Sancho. I'll serve my master until he gets to Zaragoza and then we'll figure something out. This underscores again that the novel's end point is Zaragoza, but it also indicates Sancho's confident belief that he and his master will reach an understanding regarding his salary. Finally, note the increasingly casual and modern voice of our narrator. They went to sleep, where we will leave them for now in order to relate what happened between the knight of the woods and the one of the sorrowful face. That's all for now, we invite you to watch our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.